Promo Cat here with a look at the next episode of the Friday Zone. Yeah, what you know about that ink? We're in the ocean, baby, swim or sink. Again, I have selected a poem that I think you will all like. What is it? It's a poem entitled Haunted Houses. Today, we are going to take Sappho on a boat adventure. So check out the next episode of the Friday Zone, right meow. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Friday. The week is done and it's time for fun. There's room for everyone in the Friday zone. So much to see. Who will we meet? It all happens magically in the Friday zone. In your eyes, there's a surprise. You never know what adventure might. Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Maya. And I'm Matt. Grab a towel because we're all wet on today's show. Yep. We'll journey to the island of the blue dolphins. We'll show you how you can do a fun rain experiment. But first, we head underwater for a song on the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone playlist. Friday Zone. In the water. In the fire. 
Hey there, everybody. I'm your host, Leo D. Cook. Welcome to Masterpieces of Children's Literature in Less Than a Minute. You may be wondering why I'm so sad today. It's because I just finished reading The Island of Blue Dolphin by Scott O'Dell. This book is fictional, but it's based on real events that happened to Juana Maria in the mid-19th century. This is a great book, but I warn you, you better have a hanky ready for all the happy and sad parts. So here goes. The main character is a Native American woman named Juan A. Pa Lee. What's going on? But whose secret name is Karan. She has a brother named Ramo, who is curious, which gets Ramo in a lot of hot water. They all live in a village called Gallus Ot. One day, this jerk named Captain Orlov shows up and wants to hunt sea otters there in exchange for goods. They all agree to this, but after it's over, Captain Orlov and his men pull the old switcheroo and rip off the tribe by not paying them. See, I told you he was a jerk. So Karana's dad, who happens to be the chief, is pretty honked off. So he and other members of the tribe go after Captain Jerk, I mean Orlov, and his crooked buddies. Things do not go well for Karana's dad and the rest of the tribe, and Karana is left fatherless. Later on, another chief, who is a total flake, goes for some carryout food and promises to bring back a giant canoe to get everyone else off the island. So these other folks show up and tell of all the Karana's tribe members to get all their stuff, get on this boat they got, and they'll take them all to the mainland. Now, Karana's brother, Remo, runs off to get his fishing pole, but the people on the boat don't want to wait for him and his sister and they make like a banana and split. Yup, more jerks. So then it's just Karana and Ramo on the island alone to take care of themselves. Now, something bad happens to Ramo, mm -hmm. and Karana has to learn to do all these traditional male tasks like hunting huh? and making stuff like canoes and fishing poles. Now, I could go on and on about all this other stuff that happens to Karana on the book Island of Blue Dolphin by Scott O'Dell but I want you to find that out for yourself. You'll be glad you did, and don't forget your hanky. I'm Leo D. Cook, and I'll see you next time on Masterpieces of Children's Literature in Less Than a Minute. Hello everybody, my name is Sam Bartlett, and today we have another stunt from the world of stuntology, and I think you're gonna like this one. It involves Rods. Really, one of the great things to play with, the best all-around things to play with, is a straw. And this stunt, straw popping, will never let you down with how satisfying it is. Just do straw popping. Simply take a straw, grab it at either end, like this, pinch the straw together, and then quickly twist the straw around itself. Not around your fingers, but around itself, trapping air inside the straw. Grab it with your two fingers at the other end and flick with your hand to release the air, popping it like a tiny balloon. Now, I make this look kind of easy. It's a little bit of a challenging maneuver. Again, grab the straw at either end, like this, trapping the air. It has to happen quickly because you can't contain the air in there long enough. It escapes. So, we're gonna wrap it like this, and then grab it with your fingers over here like this, and whoa, that was a good one. I love the stunt so much. I'm gonna do it one more time. That wasn't that great. Sometimes it's great, sometimes not. Good stunt. And now a video from our friends at the Terre Haute Children's Museum. Joy is here to share some science at home. Oh, what a beautiful day. Plenty of sunshine. Wait, where is the sunshine? It's April. Oh, that's not the song. 
It's rain, rain, go away. We need this rain. And why does this rain happen? It's April. April showers bring May flowers, and it is currently raining on me. Hmm. Wonder what's so hot or cold that that makes rain rain. Watch this video. Find out. Once the video is done, I'll show you a really cool experiment so you can find rain in your own house. You've probably seen a big thunderstorm cloud roll into town, and the thunder, lightning, heavy rain, and gusty winds are hard to miss. But where did that thunderstorm come from? All thunderstorms follow the same recipe. To form, these storms require three basic ingredients. Moisture, unstable air, and lift. Moisture in the air typically comes from the oceans, and areas near warm ocean currents evaporate lots of moisture into the air. Moisture in the air is also responsible for making clouds. Unstable air forms when warm, moist air is near the ground and cold, dry air is up above. To create a thunderstorm, the unstable air needs to have a nudge upward. This lift usually comes from differences in air density. Warmer, less dense air rises upward, creating lift. As the air lifts higher and higher, it causes the storm cloud to grow taller and taller. Thunderstorm clouds can rise up to 10 miles into the air. In a big thunderstorm cloud, there are now strong upward winds and downward winds happening at the same time. These are called updrafts and downdrafts. This is the most dangerous stage of the storm, when tornadoes, hail, winds, and flooding can happen. Updrafts continue to fuel the storm with warm, moist air. But once a storm runs out of updrafts, it starts to weaken. As the storm begins to slow down, the rain and wind become less intense. And by the end, all that's left is a blue sky and an anvil-shaped cloud top. Phew! Glad that's over. Sure, the storm will probably come again, but you don't need to worry. Forecasters can use weather satellites, like those in NOAA's GOES R series, to monitor clouds as they grow into thunderstorms. GOES satellites watch out for lightning, too. These satellites are constantly watching for severe weather, and the information they gather can help people stay safe during storms. Find out more about Earth's weather at NOAA SciJinx. Wow, that was a great video that talked to us all about thunderstorms. Now, I wonder how in the world we can make rain in our house. So, it takes just a few things. Super hot water. Make sure you get a pair and help me with that. A clear jar. Um, two plates. Um, um, a plate. Um, to go over the jar. And a plate to go under the jar. And ice. Ice. Okay, so hot water, jar, plate, here we go. So make sure you get a parent to help you with this project so because we're going to be dealing with top boiling water. All you need is the water, you pour it into the jar. You know for how far, oh don't touch the jar because it's going to be real hot boiling. Does that look good to me? Um, I think we should do a little hide in the pot so we could have no rain come down. That look good? So we would do that, uh, so it would be good. Um, that, um, rain so there would be no um, water so it would have no rain so okay it, so let's would, put this plate on top um i, I thought um, we would do a lot of things with the ice and the blue one on top it'll be okay let's put up this blue one on top now our hot water is really starting to condense here in um and the plate and and the water um when you put the ice on top So, do you just put, we didn't have ice cubes, but we do have these frozen ice packs, that will work. Because all we need to do is make the plate cold. So the hot air begins to rise in our jar, that's the steam, and it begins to make water droplets on the side of the jar. As the water droplets warm up, and they get all the way to the top, hit the cold plate, it sends them flying back down as rain. What do you think, Juniper? Um, if, and if you um, don't have a... Um, uh, Ice pack, I um, and you have ice cubes. Put ice, um, a bunch of ice 
to put that out and on the plate. Yep. So, so um, it would do the same thing, but it would just be ice cream. So it would rain down at different times, but ice cream would melt and it would rain down. Rain down. That's right. So you can use whatever you have at home to make this work. So I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer so we can see. Now, oh, there's some strips coming down. When you see a strip, go, oh, there's some rain. Did you see one? Oh. There's a lot on my side. There are a lot. Oh, my goodness. There are so many. Oh, there was one. Oh, this is so exciting. Every time you see a rain drop, go down the side of the jar. That's it raining. I'll hold on to the camera. You just you point it out to the kids. Um, if you come over here, there's hundreds over here that you can kind of see um little titlets coming out. Um, there's kind of lines coming. Oh, we just saw some. Woo! There's a few on my side that is coming down. No effect is um my mom, but it's. Yeah, it's really starting to rain. There's rain coming down on all the sides. So the key to this is the cold plate on top, which re represents the cool air, and the hot water and the steam, which represents warm air. Hey, give it a try. Tell us what you think. We look forward to seeing what you come up with at your science at home. Want to say goodbye? Bye. We'll be right back with more here in the Friday Zone. Winter's coming. Are you prepared? Where do you go for winter? What do you eat? Where is your home? How many of you are there? How can we keep track of you and make sure you're okay? I'm gonna find out. I found my guy. This is Frank, and he's a wildlife technician with the Department of Environmental Conservation. So what are we going to be doing today? I think we're going to be banding some ducks. So uh, we're going to band some ducks, okay. black ducks and mallards. And then once we capture those up, we're going to put bands on them and let them go. Sounds great. Great. So why do we band these ducks? We determined a while back that American black duck numbers were in a little bit of a decline. So we want to band as many of these birds as we can during the winter time so we can kind of get our minds wrapped around what it is we can do to help their populations kind of bounce back. All right, let's get to it. Yeah, so let's go see what we got in our traps. What you're seeing here is called a confusion trap. It's easy for the ducks to get in, but hard for them to get out. This is when Frank and I step in to move the ducks from the confusion trap into the capture crates, where we'll carry them away from the shore and get to banding. All right, Frank, so let's band some ducks. Right, sounds good. Frank, how did you get into this line of work? Right, so way back in the day, I went to school for this kind of work. Um, New York is kind of blessed with an amazing university system, and so I picked a degree program that was kind of lent itself to wildlife work. And I got a degree in natural resources conservation. I think it's a fantastic profession. It's really rewarding. Uh, people kind of tell Josh and I, and folks that work in the wildlife profession, you know, when we describe the work to them, they always say, oh, you have the greatest job. Yeah. You have a really neat job, and I kind of agree completely that we have, a, we have great jobs. And, uh, feel really fortunate to be doing this kind of work, but we do all kinds of other habitat management work other times of the year. Yeah, you said you only duck band for a, a short amount of time. Yeah, just for a couple months in the winter, in January and February mostly, a little bit into March, but other times of the year we work with deer some parts of the year, and coming up, as soon as we wrap this up, we'll start working on fisher. Later in the fall, sometimes we might be working with some other species doing some research for those. And so a whole host of different things. And this kind of wildlife profession lends itself to doing a diversity of things like that. And so it makes our job pretty enjoyable. Yeah. He's a little impatient. Yep. Uh, he's the most so we abandoned that yeah, bird. Yeah, we're going yeah. to get this information to Josh, yeah. and then we're going to let him go. All right, Frank. So I hear <laughs> this is the big show, the next yeah. duck. This is what we came here for today. So we know this is an American black duck. And then we also know it's a male because it's got that bright yellow bill. Okay. The goal here is to figure out if this bird was born last summer or not. Guys and gals like Frank do that by looking at a special group of feathers that change shape as the bird gets older. If these feathers don't have that adult shape to them, we know that this is a young bird in its first winter of life. Now that we can record its age, it's time to give that bird a number. So we're gonna put a band on it. You have the band. Yes. 
The bands are made out of a super lightweight metal, each with a different ID number that tells wildlife technicians like Frank where these birds fly to and how long they live for. This information helps researchers figure out how to best protect these animals. So Frank, I have a serious question. Yeah. So have you ever been pooped on? I get pooped on all the time. Really? Um, yeah, You're so very clean. I am. So yesterday I washed this jacket for the first time all winter, and that's why. <laughs> but you didn't want to see it before yesterday. <laughs> He's ready to go, and so we're going to let him go. Do you want to let one go? Is that all right? I think it's fine. Okay. You tell me when you got him. I think I've got him. Okay. Give him a little pitch up in the air, Okay. and he's going to do the rest. Okay. All right. Bye, my friend. Very good. He's so happy. So that's one bird. We've got quite a few more to do. Bye, sweetie. It's time to check out what's next in the Friday Zone. I'm coming, I'm coming. Just a minute, Peggy girl child. <laughs> Be sure to bring the dust bunnies. The dust bunnies? Yes, I have something special for you. <laughs> Come, dust bunnies. Peggy has something special for us. <clears throat> what, uh, what is it, Peggy girl child? What, 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 what do you have for us? I'm here and I'll share it with you. <laughs> uh, you know Zark hates surprises. Well, I just wanted to thank all of you again for the thoughtful gift of this tree. We just wanted to help Peggy. Well, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And in return, I have selected a poem that I think you will all like. What is it? It's a poem entitled Haunted Houses by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Ghosts? We like ghosts. D uh, did you know that there used to be a ghost in the closet? What? Really? Mm -hmm. Wait, is it still there? Uh, no, no, Harold. His, his name was Harold? Yes, Harold moved on up the road to the light. Phew! Well, that is a relief. What? What? Is Peggy phantasmophobic? Yes, Zark. Most people with a pulse are unnerved by ghosts. You don't know what you're missing. The wailing and the chain rattling parties we used to carry on well into the night. I Take your word for it. Is everyone settled? Yes, Peggy. Would you like to hear your poem? Yes, please. All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with feet that make no sound upon the floor. Uh, they make no sounds because they're ghosts. Um, <laughs> Silly Peggy. Oh. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere, and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense a vital breath of more ethereal air. Ooh, this is giving Zarg goosebumps. <laughs> I'm glad you're liking it, Zarg. Is there more? Listen closely, Zarg and Dust Bunnies. We're listening, we're listening. Mm. So, from the world of spirits, there descends a bridge of light, connecting it with this, or whose unsteady floor that sways and bends, wander our thoughts above the dark abyss. <gasps> Gosh. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Yoga. My name is Priscilla, and I'm here to practice yoga together with you. Let's take a deep belly breath in and check how are we feeling in this very moment. Now bring our hands in front of our hearts. Namaste. Ready to begin? Today we are gonna take Sapu on a boat adventure. Shall we do that? Okay, so let's jump like frogs inside our boats. Okay, good. So now we're gonna sit on our, and then we're gonna bring our feet in front of us like this. And then you can have your hands by your side to help with the balance. And you bring one foot up, the other foot up. If this is too easy, you can bring your hands front 
and then we can row our boats down the river. Can you row your boat? Good job. If we push our belly button in, it's easier to keep the balance. We are getting really strong doing this. Very good. And I see down there a bridge. Shall we go under the bridge? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna lay on our backs and we're gonna bring our feet really close to our bottoms. And we're gonna bring our hands alongside of our bodies and then we're gonna bring our hips really high, really, really high. And you can also tuck your shoulders under and, and, and bring your hands together. And the highest you can do, the tallest that is gonna be your bridge. I think Sapo is ready to pass under this bridge. Whoa, was that fun? Yes, okay, let's go. Let's go here, very good bridge. That's a really fun bridge. Okay guys, now we are gonna lie down on our boats and we are gonna relax, look up and look at the clouds in the sky. Thank you for joining me. May all be peaceful, may all be well, may all be happy. Namaste. Thanks for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to check out our website, fridayzone.org, to see past episodes and clips from the show. Yeah, you can also send us an email at zone at indiana.edu or find us on social media at the Friday Zone. But for now, remember to live, learn, and play the, the Friday, Friday Zone way. way. Let's stack these blocks. Let's do it. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... The WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community and these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu right meow.